Welcome back to another episode of Ask This Old House. Wildfires are one of the most destructive forces on the planet. Severe drought and a prolonged fire season are making them more frequent and more severe. Here in the United States, we experience 70,000 wildfires a year, ripping through communities, destroying thousands of homes and lives, and costing a staggering $5 billion a year in damage. No place is more familiar with the devastating effects wildfires can cause than California. With over 5,000 fires erupting across their landscape each year, they've adapted their building codes and practices to help residents exist with this ever-growing threat. Today, we'll show you how homeowners in the Golden State are safeguarding their homes from future fires. With wildfires on the rise in the Bay Area, it could be challenging to balance your landscape desires with climate change. So I'm here at a local nursery in California to learn about plants that are both beautiful and firewise. Hey, Josh. Hey, Jen. Good to meet you. Good to meet you, too. I'm so glad we found your nursery because we are we're working on a project and we need to be mindful of firescaping, creating defensive spaces around the house. Yeah. So we be, need to be mindful and not plant plants that have oils in them that are going to ignite, like some evergreens and grasses. And I think native plants is the way to go yeah. to start the process. Yeah. Natives are obviously what we do. It's our thing. We're a native nursery. Mm -hmm. One of our big focuses is how you maintain them to make them fire safe. And then you incorporate them into the design and it can be just as beautiful as a typical foundation planting. I completely agree. Well, why don't you give me a tour of all these beautiful species that you have? Yeah. This is one of our most beautiful natives, the California fuchsia. I like the color of the foliage and the flower. It works really well with the California gray brush with that vertical element. Yeah, they go really, really well together. I like the contrast. We have our classic California coastal redwood, which gets giant, the biggest tree in the world. Gorgeous, gorgeous, substantial tree. So this project I'm working on in Berkeley, I need a little help. I'm not familiar with all the natives out here, and if you could recommend some of the plants that I could install. Yeah, happy to help. Okay, great. So Jen, here are some plants I thought might work well for your project. Okay. We have the California coffee berry. These little flowers are bee favorites. Okay. It gets about four to six feet tall. Nice and dense. Does it grow out that way? Yes. Okay. It does. It looks so they like get it. kind of bushy. Okay. Then we have a manzanita. You can't have a California garden without a manzanita. All right. This one's called Austin Griffiths with pink flowers. Evergreen, looks good all the year. So it's evergreen. It is evergreen. Fantastic. And it blooms in winter. Okay. Then we have a monkey flower, mm -hmm. often called sticky monkey flower. Okay. Beautiful flower. This is a hybrid. They come in all different colors. Yeah. In this particular case, this is a one called grape, but our local so form ranges great. from orange to red. They really look like orange. orchids. Yeah, they're really beautiful. Mm. Custom designed for hummingbirds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, beautiful and that plants. that even makes it better. So. <laughs> yeah. It's so cool when a hummingbird swoops in and just, yep. it's a moment. It's just awesome. So I really like this whole variety. And like there's enough color and different texture and shapes and heights. And I think it's going to work well. I could send you a picture of what it looks like. And thank you for this amazing tour of this nursery. I really like what you're doing and the message you're sending to everyone. It's just, it's so important. Oh, thank you, Jen. I loved having you here. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so I'm going to just take these. <laughs> Sounds good. Happy planting. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Hi. Jamila? Yeah! Nice to meet you. Oh Thank you gosh. for writing in. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're here. So nice to be on the West Coast again. Oh, awesome. So tell me what you're thinking for the front yard. Well, I want to have native plants, and I want to have a place to sit and hang out with my neighbors. Well, I think we could do that. So I have a designer who's local, and she's going to help us out. Wow, thank you so much. You're welcome. Let's go meet her. This is my friend, April Owens. So nice to meet see you, Jamila. So Thank you. Before we talk about the design, I want to talk about like design principles that you have to use now in California. Right, right. Well, in 2017, we had these big fires. And so it really it, it made us really think differently about the landscape. So now we look at this whole umbrella, looking at firewise, drought tolerant, and biodiverse landscapes uh -huh. using native plants. Right. So, I mean, those are all key, key things that pretty much every landscape should think about, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So how did you apply them here? What's your game plan? Well, we look at the garden from the house out. So zero to five is zero feet 
to five feet from your home and you want to have no plant material in that space. Gotcha. So that's yeah. like keeping plants five feet off the foundation for fire embers, but also for firefighters to access if there is a local fire, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I know you'd ask for a, a patio or some way to be out here with your neighbors. Yeah. So we're gonna do a little patio in the zero to five and then the five to 30 from your home, you can have islands of native plants or plants separated by some hardscape. And that makes sense. Being native, the plants are gonna adapt better to this situation because they're Excellent. supposed to be here. Just what I'm looking for, thank you. So beginning this project, I imagine we're gonna have to take the bougainvillea and the flax out, right? Yes, yes. So oh. shovel time, girl. Shovel time. All right, so now we've finished clearing the front yard and we have the patio laid out over here. I wanna talk about materials. You wanna walk us through in the plan what you're thinking? Yeah, so instead of landscape fabric, we used compacted base rock and we do about three inches of that. Okay. And then we're gonna do about a half an inch of the crushed Trinity okay. rock. And we use this cobble kind of to accent around the landscape. Okay. We call cobble like solid granite cobblestones back east. So I would call that river stone, but I love that accent around the patio. What are we gonna do with the boulders? The boulders are gonna kind of set the scene with some soil out here. So we're gonna bring in soil okay. and mound it up okay. and level it out so it looks all natural and then put the boulders in to make it more interesting and creative versus yeah. just, you know, Absolutely. just nothing. Yep. And then the boulders will kind of accent some of these wonderful shrubs that we have like the manzanita mm -hmm. which is great for hummingbirds right the coffee berry yeah. is that right yes. I love how that's gonna grow it's so pretty yes yeah and then we have the eyebrow grass so it's what? really sweet it looks like little eyebrows and then the Sun catches that oh, perfect uh, just another element mm -hmm. in the landscape mm. let's do this And then we're just gonna tamp it in. Is this called crushing it? Yep, that's so crushing it. Tighten the core. I think we're gonna try to go right to the edge of the steel header so it's not a tripping hazard. <laughs> okay, that's, that's close. <laughs> then we'll lay out the plants. Natives are more likely to stay hydrated in the drought. The key to less burnability is to be more hydrated. And how deep does it go? Well, look at your plant, and that's the depth you want to go. So I take it and then flip it over and catch it, take the top off. This, I'm going to go like this, loosen that up just a little bit. And you want the top of the plant to be level with that soil. Then we backfill it. My neighbors are gonna be so excited. Uh, hello. hello. This hello. is amazing. Oh, hello, hello. <laughs> this is an incredible use of space. You know, it makes sense, the zero to five foot zone. It's functional, now you have a place to sit. But this mounded landscape, it just adds a little bit of privacy. You just need to keep it watered, really, right? Do you yeah, have any instructions? Yeah, just a, a few days a week with a deep soak. Just okay. come out here with that sprinkler. And then you get to know the plants better as you're out here, mm -hmm. and you can see the butterflies and the birds come and just watch everything grow. Right, so cheers to that. Thank you. All right? Cheers. Great Thank job you, on the design, April. Fantastic Thank you. education. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.